basically a year review on all the products that I'm using. I've got nine koi in there. Built this myself, which is called a spray bar. And hope I don't fall in the pond. Give me a spin. Bob's your uncle. You know the rest of that. Exactly what you're seeing on the screen right now. What I've got to do on a weekly basis, just to keep things tickety tock. What happens is it comes across the drum, and because it hasn't got the same power to push it back that way, Bob's your uncle vanish your hand. How about that for a Sunday? Make sure everything's working right. I should have fit a purge line. Why well, come up with an idea where I didn't need to fit a purge line? Once a month, it needs recalibrating. I haven't got no complaints. This is what calibrates your pH. One of the most important bits of equipment. A few ways I combat my KH. They both get you from A to B. It's just which way you want to go there. And I want to go there in style. It's full of 12 and a half kilos of activated carbon. It's only draining 53 watts. And it absolutely works the treat. And I don't waste gallons and gallons of water. Hello everyone, welcome back. James the Koi Whisperer. So today coming up in this video, I'm giving you a rundown of how my filter system's been working, how I've been managing to keep this pond running. And it's basically a year review on all the products that I'm using and just give you a rundown of what I'm doing each week to maintain the pond. Very minimal, but it needs to be said, needs to be done, needs to be made into a video. And that's what I'm doing today. So stick around for the video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the family and uh, let's just crack on with this video. So to start with, if you're new to the channel and you're a little bit unsure what's going on here, Basically, I built this pond 12 months ago. I built it all by myself, apart from the fiberglass in. I just really wanted to run down through, give you all a bit of a breakdown of how the pond's performed over the past 12 months. Show you certain things of what I've got to do to maintain the pond quality, the water quality. So the pond in question is 2,600 gallon. It took me around six to eight months to build it. Inside of the pond, I've got nine koi in there. The smallest is uh, around 25 to 30 centimetres, leading on to the biggest in there is well over 80 centimetres. So I'm pretty well stocked, I think I can fit a couple more in there, but I think I'm pretty well spent out this year. A lot of them come from my old pond that I had, and uh, I've added three new fish since they've been in the pond. Every fish that I've got, they've all got a name. This is one of the oldest fish that I've got in the pond. This one here is called Marmite. Simon there at the back. Big Betty down there. You got Biggie, which is just slipped in down the bottom. This is one of the newest members of the team. This one's yet to actually have a name. It's a Jinrin Chagoy. Also got the Shuro, which is Daisy 2.0. You've also got Tango right there. You get the drift of it. The reason why they've all got names, it makes it easy to identify the fish that I'm speaking about to you guys when I'm speaking about that certain fish. So as you've seen, I've got a pond window. I really want to start here with this sort of bit of a video of the yearly update. I was a bit set on the fence to be fair with you. Do I put a window in when I was planning to build it? But having it fitted, highly recommend putting one in yourself if you can. I'm so super happy that I put it in. There's a few little things that you've got to do with having a window, stuff that obviously Green algae, you've got to clean off of it. Keep it clean, stays clean. Standard window cleaning brush. You get these off eBay. This one was $9.99. No need to get your hands dirty. No need to get them wet. Just straight in with a brush and just up and down on the window. I find this removes all of the algae and it gets rid of it in a matter of seconds. Do this once a week. Keep it clean, stays clean. Up and down with that. Right across the top, shake off the water, give them a spin, Bob's your uncle, you know the rest of that. As you can see, lovely and clean, happy days. Moving on from that, you can also see you've got one pile of air coming up there and another pile coming up there. And the reason why that is, is when I built this pond, I opted for two bottom drains, one down there, and one down there and I wanted them exactly equal distance apart from the window so when you look through the window in the center you don't have to see the air coming up and it worked out an absolute treat. In the garden when I'm having my morning cuppa on a Sunday morning this is where I like to sit and the viewing I get from that is exactly what you're seeing on the screen right now. 
So it's part of the reason why I decided and opted with the two bottom drains either side of each other, viewing straight between the big five foot TV. Because I call it a TV, not a window. So anyone that's new to the channel, you're probably thinking, how do you keep your water quality so clean? That leads us on to walking over to this special room over here. And we're going to go in there now. This is where the magic happens. This is what keeps the pond crystal clean. I have the TF500 Burton's drum filter, which is six inlets, four outlets, which is capable of pushing 55 to 60,000 litres an hour of water through the system. And it seems to work an absolute treat. Part of the reason why I opted with the two bottom drains so I can pull as much water through that drum filter as possible. I also house a beneficial bacteria box filter, which is full of 200 litres of the bio tube and the bio flow from Burton's, which has been working absolutely fantastic this year. I haven't had one single complaint with that media and it's kept the water exactly how I've wanted to keep it. Before anyone starts banging on about you've got a drum filter, you don't need to do nothing. I just wanted to add, since now owning a drum filter for the very first time, I do want to say a couple things about it, especially about the one that I've got. I've found no faults of the drum itself, nothing in question, but they're not completely maintenance free. I do believe they could be completely maintenance free if they're set up exactly correctly. I've got to put my hands up. I haven't got this drum filter set up exactly how it should be. So I'm going to spin it round, show you the reasons why. Not that it's a problem, it works fine but I just want to show you what I've got to do on a weekly basis just to keep things tickety-tock. So just so we're all on the same page, this drum's fed by two bottom drains, four inch, four inch, and it's also fed by a four inch skimmer line that comes around the back underneath the filter and it sits and returns into the drum here. So this drum, just to make it 100% clear, there's three inlets this side and there's also three inlets this side. There's two outlets this side, and there's two outlets this side. So you've got the dirty side of the drum, the dirty side of the drum, the clean, and the clean, after the water's fed through the system. So this side of the drum, coming into the drum itself, I get no trouble whatsoever. Let me just flip the lid for you a minute. So looking inside the drum filter, down through here, you can see the water absolutely belting through. This is pulling off of my two pumps off the bottom, which this one's running 30,000 litres an hour of water through. With the skimmer line, because I wanted to keep these two ball valves completely open so I get no sediment build up in the bottom of my drains, I've slightly turned the back one, and all that does, it slows down the flow from the skimmer because I didn't want to be pulling as much water from the top of the pond so I just adjusted the ball valve. But by me doing that and having running it for a full year now, all I find that happens, and it's down to me, is that there's not enough flow coming through this side of the drum. So what you find what happens, and before I show you all, this is a complete week's worth. This is a heavily fed pond, a heavily stocked pond, and it's a week's worth of crap what you're about to see. This bottom corner, there's just a little bit of crap build up in this bo bottom corner here and is as straightforward and as easy as me cleaning it out like i'm going to show you when i said they're not maintenance free this is all i've got to do then right, guys so real quickly as a demo what i do um sometimes i do it every two weeks to be honest with you it all depends how much food's been in there but quite recently they've been feeding eight times a day roughly around 500 grams to 600 grams of food a day and uh you just get a little bit of build up down here. Not that it's a problem, there's no fault with the drum, there's no fault of the system. It's basically, because I've got six inlets on here, the plans before the electric pier went up, I was gonna put another pump on and put 30,000 litres of water over both the showers, I'll explain in a minute. But the price of electricity, crazy in it, so we just can't afford it, so that never happened, but it's there if I want to. So for as simple as me putting that siphon in there, put it down to the bottom and just, just siphon it out and you'll see down through this tube hardly anything comes out but just a little bit of shit and build up get rid of it and it's gone then it's less than 30 seconds to get rid of it 
And because this is a clear pipe, you can keep an eye on if it's all gone or if there's still some left in there. Ideal world, yes, you shouldn't have to do this, but the way I got it set up is part of the reason why I have to do it, because I should have had equal amounts of water coming through both sides of the drum, but I haven't. I've got more coming through one side, hence the reason it pushes some of the shit right over, and I've got to take it out this way. But as you've just seen, 30 seconds, and I've cleared it out. I take this dirty water, and it kills two birds with one stone, because that one has a little drink, that one has a little drink, that one has a little drink. The tree's over here as well. One lot in there. One lot in there. Bob's your uncle Fanny Duran. How about that for a Sunday? While I'm here as well, weekly thing. Keep it clean, stays clean. So I just got a little tough brush. I just run round the drum real quickly, getting rid of any of the overspill. It's done. And then I'll just use bit of bomb water, run it round the top of the drum, washing everything down, if anything's splashed up over the week, keep it clean, I take it straight from my skimmer, onto the top, give it a bit of a clean across there, it's all stainless steel inside of this drum so there's no worries about where the water goes, and if the wife likes to get down here a minute, see down in the waste tray, there's a little bit of crap, I just flush a load of water through and then it comes out the other side if there's any crap in the in the waste tray it just flushes it straight through job's done so the last thing i do i put it on a quick clean and uh on the filter box it's got its control panel just test the uh, nozzles on the pressure washer system make sure everything's working right everything seems to be working a treat so one extra thing that i do as well on a weekly basis, when I built this pond, a lot of people said to me that I should have fit a purge line. Well, I come up with an idea where I didn't need to fit a purge line, I didn't want all the extra pipe work, and I didn't want to be wasting shit loads of water. So the idea what I come up with, I'm running two 30,000 litre an hour pumps here. What I do is I tune them up to absolute maximum, as fast as I possibly can. And from there, what I do, just to make sure I've got nothing left in me pipes, I turn off my skimmer line, and then what will happen, it will make the drum trigger off because there's not enough water going through the system. But if I do it quickly, it works a treat. I literally shut off one bottom drain. It means I'm pulling through 60,000 litres of water through one line. Here the drum filter just triggered off. And I'll run that line for about 30 seconds, switching it back over. And then I turn the opposite line and clear out that line just to make sure that there's nothing stuck in those bottom drains and what you can see what happens the speed of water that I'm pulling if you look over to this drum all of the K1 started to slowly go down because I'm pulling so much water through the system can't keep up so that means there's nothing left in my pipes this idea and it absolutely works a treat and I don't waste gallons and gallons of water and when I know that I'm done and the, and the fillers have done what they needed to do I turn these pumps right down, running them at a slow flow rate to make sure that plenty of dwell time into this filter right here because you need to have plenty of dwell time into a moving bed filter. You need to make sure there's enough time for the beneficial bacteria which is colonized around, you know, this plastic media. You need to, to have enough time, the water itself to have enough time to make contact with your media to make sure that it cleans the water returning back to the pond. So as you can see, this pump here is running at the absolute slowest that it can run. So it's only draining, it's only running at 30% is the slowest that this pump can run. And it's only draining 53 watts. I don't know if that's clear enough for you to see there, but it's draining 53 watts. As you can see by my return to the showers, this pump's running absolutely flat out and it's using 398 watts and it's running at 100%. So in theory, I'm pulling 15,000 litres of water over both of my showers. That moves us outside to the stainless steel showers that I've got. These stainless steel showers come from Burton's. Absolutely incredible value for money for what they are, the quality, handmade. So I've got 10 boxes in total of the Lotus Root bacteria um, from Mountain Tree. 
it's an absolute fantastic media i do believe that it's available all over the world i know in the uk i think there's only one koi dealer that sells it and i think it's called absolute koi so you have to check that out yourself but the media itself is absolutely fantastic it holds a low ph value it helps stabilize your ph let me just pop one out and i'll show you what's inside these two stainless steel showers so as you can see in the top of the shower i also built this myself which is called a spray bar it spreads the water over the shower as it's coming down through and a perfectly even space i've done it with a ruler a drill with eight mil holes the pipe itself is three inch pipe so the rest of the pipe works two inch which allows more water up here if you ever pump the shower up to more volume of water will allow more pressure of water for this to spread further but i've got it set perfectly evenly all the way up through and it spreads the water completely exactly how i wanted it as you can see on the top we've got the filter mat from mountain tree as well this is layered on every layer on the shower filter itself as it goes down through which also is a very good bio home as well but the reason why this is here is to allow the water to spread a little bit further when it hits that mat means it trickles through the next stage of the filter in so if i just lift this mat up this hasn't been moved for a solid year so you're seeing it as I see it. I don't like playing around with it too much. But as you can see, without that mat there, the water's not spread as well as what it would be with having the mat there. So that's on every single layer. Now if I just grab one of these out a second to show people what they don't know what they are. And hope I don't fall in the pond. The surface area on this media is absolutely fantastic. It's probably one of the best types of media that you can have to house all of your beneficial bacteria it gives it a home to live it doesn't just you know it doesn't just bounce off of it or live in one space it actually lives right between it it's so porous it's unbelievable anyone that's thinking about upgrading their media i definitely highly recommend go and check this out lotus root top top quality and it's made my water quality absolutely perfect this year I believe that this media is what keeps my pond singing and dancing. The plastic media is good, but you'll never, never, ever come close to using media which is porous and ceramic with the surface area between this type of media. I mean, it's outstanding. Take me out off to it. And Mountain Tree, absolute godsend for inventing such a brilliant product. And there's that happy days. So yeah, moving on from all of that, there's a few extra things that I've got to do on a weekly basis. One of them is water changes. I'm a real strong believer of changing the water very slowly over the course of the week. Instead of changing 10% or 15 or 20% at the end of the week when you clean your filters to, to take out such a big volume of water and put such a fresh amount of water back to your pond, even if you're running it through a dechlorinator or a big blue to take out any chlorine no matter where you live in the world in the uk we have to deal with a chlorine which is put into the water to make our tap water safe for us to drink which a lot of koi keepers know that chlorine to a koi pond kills all your beneficial bacteria the fish really don't like it and um there's a couple of ways of combating how to deal with that i'm a strong believer of a real slow trickle 10% over a course of a week instead of banging 10% in at one go. So I'll show you how I do that. My tap water feeds the pond for a three stage dechlorinator, which this here takes out 95% of the chlorine to start with. They're super cheap to replace these filter cartridges. The first one just is a five micron, which takes any of the big bits out of your water. And then you've got two lots of activated carbon, which helps take out a lot of the chlorine to start with running at a super slow flow rate through the filter still doesn't take out all of the chlorine so what i've done i use another equipment called a big blue which is full of 12 and a half kilos of activated carbon which runs through another pre-filter to start with to make sure that there's nothing passing any of this system it runs down the system back up the system and then it returns to the pond around the outside you can see it runs across here I've done a little loop so it's got to come back up over it just trickles into the pond 
and that's roughly around 10 to 15 percent it runs 24 7 never stops constantly trickling into the pond one thing you have to do you do have to check to make sure no chlorine's coming through the system you can use dpd number four tablets which turns the water pink if you've got any chlorine to the system but the only true way of knowing of how much chlorine that you're pumping into your pond is by investing in a total chlorine hannah test meter it's the only way to know exactly if you're pumping any chlorine to your pond talking of water i also invested in a blue lab guardian as you can see here the reason why we're talking about this one because once a month it needs recalibrating it flashes a 7 and a 4.10 the reason why that's flashing is because see this black wire running into here which is this is how it takes the reading of the tds in temperature this is what takes the reading for your ph as well so once a month i take both of them out give them a clean purchase myself a ph pro care kit in the kit you get two packs of each of these two of the ph4 the ph7 the pro cleaner you do get yourself a little toothbrush you get yourself your little tubes to put it all in start with what i do i use the pro cleaner and all i do I take it out, I put a couple of squirts into my water, give it a bit of a swirl, I grab the brush, give it a bit of a swirl, the dirty water down the drain, that there gives the drain a nice smell as well, look at that, I've got it everywhere showing you on video. And then you got to keep the end of these probes wet all the time, it's like they say, if it dries, it dies, so keep it wet. Give it a stir, might take a couple of seconds, and then all you do, Soon as it says seven, hold your hand on it, calibrate, you let go, and then it calibrates up to seven. Soon as it goes all the way, that one will stop flashing now. That's calibrated at seven, it'll reset itself. Then the next one you gotta calibrate is calibrate four. So all you do, and into your pH four, give it a stir. And then as you can see, it starts slowly dropping. You have it, as soon as it hits four, all you do, hold your finger on it, let go of it as soon as it says calibrate. It will calibrate up to four. And then it will reset itself again. And then this time, both of these will flash. And when both of them are on, that means you're calibrated exactly right for and set for another month and it means your pH probe is exactly how it needs to be. So I just stir it around into that water again just to make sure none of the solution goes to the pond. Put it back on the side of the pond. You can see the pH start rising and it will give me a constant reading of my pH. We'll take a couple of minutes for this to come up to the right reading again. I'll check it over the next 15 minutes just to make sure it's back where it needs to be. But I'm a real strong believer if you can keep an eye on your pH every single time, whenever you walk to the filter house, whenever you look at the pond, instead of taking a test, with, there's nothing wrong with using one of these tests. You can use a Colombo test, NT Labs test, whatever you want. But I found this has helped me absolutely tremendously this year because I can keep an eye on the pH. And if I know my pH one day comes in at 7.4 or 7.1 or 6.9, I know I've got a fluctuation of pH, which means my KH needs adjusting. I'll explain what I'm doing with my KH to keep my KH exactly where I need to be with that because your KH helps keep your pH stabilised. So what I'm about to tell you is what I do for my pond because no matter where you live in the world, everyone's tap water supply is going to be different no matter where you are. There's a few ways I combat my KH because my tap supply water has a super super low kh sometimes not even half a kh on the uh on the reading of the hannah test kit there is other ways of testing for your kh but i find to get a true reading i invested in a hannah test kit you do have to fart around with these the number that it gives you you have to divide it by 17.9 and it gives you your exact reading well what i found over this summer I've been adding the exact same amount of KH every single week, which is a KH buffer. Bicarbonate soda does exactly the same thing. All I do, I measure out what I need once a week. I literally fill it with pond water, give it a stir. All I do now, I just run it up through the pond, all the way past the window, 
trickling it down through. And I find this just keeps it stable for the rest of the week. Jobs are good and happy days. So overall, with a bit of a quick video, trying to get in as much information of the review of the yearly run of the pond. I'm pretty, pretty damn happy with how everything's been, how everything's performed. I haven't had no major problems this year. I've been very, very lucky adding three or four new fish that I've had no trouble with bringing any parasites to the pond. I've, uh, I've done really well again, to be fair, and I'm super, super happy. I'm happy with the pond. I'm happy with the way it's performed. I'm happy with how everything's developed over the year, learning a little bit more extra myself this year, learning how this system works because every single pond's different and every pond's different how it runs and you make it run what works for you, for every single person who's into the hobby. And uh, I think I sort of nailed this one on the head. I'm super happy with the products that I'm using. I haven't got no complaints. I know there'll probably be a few questions asking, would I have changed anything? Would I have done anything differently? And to be honest with you, apart from having a bigger garden, and a bigger pond, I don't think there would be, but I, I maximised the space that I had. I don't know really what else to say, to be fair with you guys. It's been, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic, and I'm super happy with it. I know there'll be a few comments as well in the video saying, oh, you've got all the fancy equipment, you've got all of this, and you don't need this, and you don't need that, and everything that I've showed you and everything that I've done is I've done it for myself. Um, and to be honest with you, you don't need everything. It's like the same as a car, isn't it? You can have an old banger or you can have a nice expensive car. It depends what you want. They both do the same job. They both get you from A to B. It's just which way you want to go there. And I want to go there in style. So in that note, I've worked hard for this pond. I'm still paying for this pond. But you get what you want out of life. And I wanted it. So any of the yibbity yabbada, jibbity jabbada, I'm signing out. Over and out. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one.